I'm going to so correct Mr. Fong for the curriculum in Merrill's. You have to. Like I said, we're, we're switching books. Shield. Line trigger was a little different. Males. I'll make sure he's aware of that. For males, you have to shield males. Yeah, he's 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. oh shield males. No, yeah. he Okay, so her curriculum, guys, her curriculum, her, and I'll make sure Mr. Fong understands, write this down, remember this, this may be on your test, it probably will be on your test, per the curriculum, and for the registry, you must shield males, females are optional, after all x -rays. currently, and you know that might be changing soon, currently. Such a ray, guys, once again, two inches above your crest. Why? To include that diaphragm. Mm -hmm. It's a perpendicular such a ray, no angulation. We're not doing any angles this chapter. Thank God, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not yet. Don't worry, lots more next semester. <laughs> now, what are we going to see on our uprights? We're still going to see that size and shape of the liver, the spleen, the kidneys, and those calcifications. But one thing that's very different is, once again, we can see the air levels. Mm -hmm and fluid levels. Now, when you're looking at air levels, if you want to determine if you're seeing an upright versus KUV, you look at these straight horizontal lines. You'll see what I'm talking about? If you see gas with a straight horizontal line cutting it off, that tells us the patient is wrecked. That's your clear indication that it's an upright abdomen. It's a good thing to remember, because you do need to be able to tell the difference between the two radiographs. KUV, you're not gonna see those straight lines, because you're laying flat on your back, but standing up, air does what? It rises with gravity, is going to be cut off with that horizontal line in segments. Like right here, right here, right here, right here. If there's any fluid, it's going to fall down here. So criteria, guys, that's the same as our supine, but we do want to see the diaphragm without motion. That's so we're doing the expiration, by the way. And we do want to include a marker in case it's an upright position, because even though air is rising, not every patient has air, and you may not be able to tell. Or you got a radiologist doesn't know what they're talking about, don't know what they're looking at. So we gotta help them out and do that upright marker. That's still a physical marker, by the way, not digital. You know, unless your text gonna use digital, I use digital as well. Per curriculum, it still must be a physical marker indicating upright. Yes? So is upright the only one that we're looking at uh, air and fluid? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're gonna do it on the DQ as well, because that's the alternative. Mm -hmm. Does this patient have any uh, pathologies other than, like, air? In the... I need to use the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> Lots of feces in there. They're probably very constipated, which is causing the extra air. It's causing them to be backed up. A lot of your patients clean with abdominal pain, you just need to use the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Seriously. What is a homework? Give me a laxative. What's a homework? What do you recommend? Laxative. laxative. Mm -hmm. Good old fashioned laxative does a job. Or, you know, one of the cheap routes go to Taco Bell, yeah. get you know, some yeah. 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 Or drink some prune juice. Uh, papaya yeah. juice. Yeah. Papaya juice is really good yeah. for that. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> this goes with the upright series as well, guys. We can do an alternative. This is what I was talking about the PA abdomen upright. Why would we do this? Patient comfort, and if we want to reduce gonadal dose. Now, based on this principle, why do you think this is reducing gonadal dose? Because it's coming from the side. It's coming from the back, right? You see how the path of beans hit in the back and not the front? So if you have a patient that's really paranoid about gonadal dose, doesn't happen too often, you can opt to do this view, but ideally you want to go with the AP upright abdomen, which is more optimal view. You're still going to stare the exact same way, guys, two inches above the crest. Nothing has changed, you're just facing the IR. Still equally distributing that weight. And your anterior surface is touching the eye arms down your back. Mm -hmm. It says also when the kidneys are not of primary interest, but most of the time they are. So this is rarely done. This is more so a comfort thing. If you're just saying, oh, my back's killing me. There's no way I can lay up against the IR. It doesn't happen too often. But you get some people that are going to be kind of demanding on that. But just an alternative you can do. Just like the cube is an alternative, but upright as well. I know you guys learned the table prone, but the table prone is not included in Merrill's anymore. So we're going to do the PA upright. PA upright, I'll make sure Mr. Prone is aware of that. That table prone is now only ever done for barium enema exams. 
you can go ahead and write this down, it's like way a few semesters ahead, but the PA Pro is now only ever performed when we're doing VE exams and they want to see the sigmoid colon better. Because a PA Pro will put the sigmoid colon closer to the IR. Yes? Not really. Not really. That's never going to be an acceptable alternative to a KUB. At least not anymore. In fact, they've removed it from the book. So, so in that case, is there only one that um, you align the central ray to the iliac part? There's, there's another, but we're going to get to it. There's one more. There's one other. So you said PA-prone is only done fall? PA-prone currently is only done on, on a barium enema exam when they want to see the sigmoid yes. colon better. It puts it closer to the IR. All right, center ray, guys, for your PA upright two inches above the crest. We're still using that 14 by 17 cassette. By the way, I haven't mentioned this on the other ones. These are all 14 by 17 cassettes. Every abdominal x-ray, everything in this chapter is 14 by 17. Whew. Your smaller patients go ahead and collimate down slightly but most of your patients will fill that 14 by 17 out quite easily. But you still want that little bit of evidence of collimation when you can do it. It's going to enhance your image and protect your patient. Perpendicular central ray. For the record, I've never done a PA upright. I've always just done AP uprights. But it is an alternative if you choose to use that. It's not like my patients face me and look at me, especially if they're wobbly. My personal preference. All right, so the evaluation criteria is the exact same as your upright AP projection. That's an easy slide to remember right there. Exactly the same. I like it when they're exactly the same. Less to remember, right? They're so, you know, they, they make weird, do weird visuals. They always like to do allegory. You know what allegory is? You don't know what allegory is? When you're like kind of, let's get to what allegory is like. Like you know when a movie tries to give you like an artsy vision of something? You probably lose it here. That's, yeah, that's a talk for another day. Look it up, look up the definition of allegory. Look up the allegory of the cave. They use that a lot in philosophy. <laughs> like, I'm trying to give you an example of this. I don't want to explain it. Like, if you see a movie and they're making a character look like a Christ figure, like it's not Jesus Christ, but he's like a part of representing Jesus Christ. It's like an allegory, a Christianity kind of thing. A movie. Am I losing you completely? Yeah. Don't worry about it. Is it just like yeah, it's yeah. like a metaphor, but not like a metaphor. That's no way to say it. Yeah, sort, yeah, sort of, sort of. Huh? <laughs> That's what a metaphor is, right? What? You don't use like your ass. Right? That's like something like that. All right. Well, you know what? We'll add a philosophy class to the program, and we'll we'll get more into this later. <laughs> they usually have hidden meanings, allegories. Yeah, like I love allegorical stories. I love allegory. Lord of the Rings is an allegorical story. Huh? <laughs> All right. Okay. Back on the subject here. That's gonna be on your test. Write that down. That's gonna, be, that's gonna be your bonus Why? question. Why? 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 Your bonus question. What's an allegory? Um, AP admin lateral to cutis guys. Once again, why do we do this when they are too ill to stand or in too much pain? This is your alternative to an upright because we're still gonna be able to visualize free air and fluid levels in the abdomen. Now, you're almost always, unless the doctor says otherwise, you're gonna do your left lateral only. And please remember that, guys, because people have missed that, because you're gonna see bad text doing your right laterals, but you must do a left lateral unless a doctor directly requests that. It's optimal, it's gonna be the best representation of what you wanna see, and it's just in your curriculum as well, in your registry. So how are we gonna patient? Uh, how are we gonna put the patient in position, guys? They're gonna be in AP projection position, by the way, even though they're laying on their side. Ours need to be above their head, become our level of the diaphragm. 
Flex those knees slightly, guys. Make sure those knees aren't straight out. If their legs are straight out while they're laying like this, they're gonna wobble on you and they're gonna rotate. You're not gonna get a good projection of that image. So flex those knees slightly. Make sure they're right on top of each other. Keep them nice and secure for you. We're centering those iliac crests two inches above. Now it says four, two crests, four, two inches above. Ideally, we're always gonna go ahead and do the two inches above for this particular view. So even though your book says both, that's the one you want to focus on. That's the one they're asking on the exam as well. Two inches above the crest on that decubitus abdomen. Left bio decubitus abdomen. By the way, it's not filter guy. It's not the same guy. Oh. His face has been revealed. <laughs> it's like the Scooby-Doo villain. They revealed the face. You know? I would have gotten away with it too. Work for those little kids, those meddling kids. Yes, John's. If left is mostly performed, shouldn't we practice left for the test talk too? You aren't doing a left lateral. We're doing right lateral. Right lateral before this face and probably with the tube. In that case, if you have to for lab, but in general, it must be a left, guys. For lab, I know this space is limited in there, and that's probably why I'm doing the right lateral. But just keep in mind that needs to be a left in real life. <coughs> Is a uh, they didn't include the uh, pillow, regular right? lucid pillow, like in the, like in between the legs? Mm -hmm. Not required, but oh. it's going to help you with comfort and being still. All right, such a ray, guys. Once again, um, you have that option, but you want to make sure that ideally is two inches above your crest. We're going to make those exposures at the end of expiration. By the way, that's every exam in chapter four. Everything is at the end of expiration to move that diaphragm in the proper spot for those abdominal x rays. Now, you're never going to see anybody do this in real life. I've never done this in real life. But per the curriculum and the standard set, you're technically supposed to wait five minutes before you take your exposure when you put them in a decubitus position. Does anybody know why that is? Allow the air, Allow the air to rise, correct. Because sometimes it won't rise right away. But, you know, time is money. You've got to expedite patients. No one's gonna wait five minutes. I sure did. I got like 20 kids waiting. I'm not waiting five minutes for that. No way. No one ever does that. But ideally, you would want to do that. Yes. So for the AP or rank, you're also supposed to wait five minutes if they've been laying. Technically, yes. Okay. Yeah. But most of the time, you're gonna do that first. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to include that in there. And it's not a not a need, but technically, yes. So you don't see a difference in the image that if, if you don't. You I mean, it's not a need. Because I've never actually done it, I guess I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, I've always seen the free air right away when they're laying on their side, personally. But they're claiming, yes, that it would make a difference. All right, so what are we going to see, guys? Same structures as your AP, but ideally, what are we going to see? That pathology, that free air and the air fluid levels. What was that pathology called, by the way? New Pneumoperitoneum. <coughs> Excuse me. What else do you want to see? Diaphragm without motion. How do we achieve the diaphragm without motion? Expiration. Well, both sides of the abdomen. Now, write this down. Put a star on it. You're going to see some situational questions on your exam, guys. We're going to put the side down, the affected side down, when there, there's fluid suspected. We're going to put the unaffected side down when it's free air. Depends on what they're looking for. If they're looking for both, you're going to put the side with fluid down. Because air rises, fluid falls, and you'll see both. But if it's one or the other, this is the general principle you're going to follow right here. Once again, fluid falls, air rises. We've got to adjust that, that patient accordingly to meet that need of what they want to see. Nice. Now, you can see on this image right here, guys, this is showing us free air. A little hard to see, a little blurry. Might look better in your book. But do y'all see the free air here? Yeah. It's really dark. That's what we're looking for. The fluid, if there was any, would be down here. Or sometimes it gets stuck up here as well. But hopefully it's going to fall all the way down here. We also want to see that abdominal wall, the flank structure, and the diaphragm. Now, out here, I'm not sure if it's in your book, guys, but just like with the decubed chest x rays, we're going to build them up with pillows or a sponge. Yes. We want to do that as well because we need to see both sides of the abdomen. If something's cut off, imagine if I'm cutting this off, what am I in danger of? not revealing to that radiologist. The fluid. If there's a lot of fluid and it fell all the way down here, if I'm cutting this off, 
many distance of pathology. So you want to build them up and make sure both sides of that abdomen are included on that DQ. Very important. You know, you're not doing that in lab either. Real patients, you want to build them up on sheets, pillows, sponges, wherever you have. You got a question? Yeah, can you repeat that? You said the affected side goes down and fluid is affected? Right, so if it's if it's fluid they're worried about, you're going to put the affected side down. So they say, oh, the patient, well, you always do left anyway, but the general rule is affected side with fluid is down, unaffected side is down for air. Yeah. And so what do you mean the affected side? It's always going to be left, the side of concern. Side of concern, but once again, even though I guess I should have made this a disclaimer. Even though, as the principal, we're always doing left laterals anyway for abdomen. It's gonna be a little more concerned on your chest X-rays because those affect those. You, you have the flexibility on chest X-rays. So if you suspect that there's fluid in the left lung, you need to lay on the left side. For the lungs, but for abdomen, it's always gonna be left no matter what. Yeah. That's a little confusing how it's worded there, but chest X-ray, I guess that's gonna apply more for your chest X-rays because you're gonna flip them around. But for abdomen, even though it says this principle, we're still always gonna opt for left lateral. Evaluation criteria here, guys. No rotation of your patient. Make sure their back is nice and flat against that IR. And you're in a true lateral on that table as well. We still want those spinous processes at the center of our vertebrae, lumbar spine. Ischial spines, if we can see them, need to be symmetric. But guess what? You're not going to see those anyway because you're going to depressed. All of our wings, that's the flat areas of the pelvis, need to be symmetric as well, just like the other ones we talked about. And very important, we want proper identification when we do a cube of which side is up. They have markers at your facilities with a little arrow like this. You want to put the arrow on the side up to indicate which side is up in the air for the radiologist. It's very important as well. You can always mark the side up, by the way. You're going to put a left marker down here. You're always going to put a marker on that elevated side. So since we're always doing left lateral the cubes on abdomens, you're always going to put an R with an arrow pointing up at the top of your film every single time. If we have the marker that has the BBs, would it be uh, acceptable to just use that instead of the arrow? No. No? You still need the arrow. Good question. You must have the arrow. I'm telling you, I know these radiologists like to act like they're super smart, but you get some dumb ones up there. Mm -hmm. they don't, they'll, they'll, I've had a radiologist ask me, why is it sideways? I'm like, have you been to school? <laughs> I mean, we do uh, quite a bit of these x-rays. What do you mean, why is it sideways? It's a decubitus. You'd be surprised at the questions you get. <laughs> Mostly the residents. They're still learning. <laughs> I still give them a hard time because they think they're so they're super doctors. smart. Yeah. I'm, still a doc I'm, a I'm still a doctor. I'm still a doctor. Simmer down. Simmer down. Can you do that again? Huh? <laughs> Are we recording? Yeah. <laughs> we get some ego trips, I'll tell you that. All right, so we also have a regular lateral abdomen, like a lateral chest, guys, except it's on the table. Now, this is going to be, even though there's an option once again, optimally at the crest, just like the KUV. So that's two exams you've learned here that are at the crest. Did you guys do this do it like this in the lab? Make sure. Make sure we're consistent here. I need to review with Fong because like I said, we did switch books. On the lateral on the table, it must be at the crest ideally. Oh, no. um, that makes sense. Yeah, because it was at the navel. Yeah. Yeah. Only the supine and the prone and the upright were at two at the crest. No. The only two are gonna be the only two that are gonna be at your iliac crest, guys. Go ahead and write this down. The only two exams are gonna be at your crest are your KUV and your lateral abdomen. All the other ones are gonna be two inches above the crest. Now, this exam in particular is not performed super often, but there is one primary reason that we do this x-ray. It's based on a pathology that we had a lot of fun looking at the other day. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Foreign objects? Your foreign objects, yes. 
They will do lateral abdomens to check on the placement of that foreign object to make sure or double check what, you know, what orifice and what organ it's in. They'll check that placement of that foreign body. So most of your foreign body x-rays will always be at least APPA and lateral. Because you want to see what area of the body exactly that's located in. Now for position guys, it's going to be basically positioned just like your D-cube. You're on your side, knees are bent on top of each other, they're flexed to keep that stability, and arms are up above the head. Make sure those elbows aren't in your diaphragm. But we are putting the IR and the CR at the level of the crest for your regular lateral abdomen. Your lateral D-cube, two inches above the crest. Similar words, but make sure you know the difference between those two. <clears throat> Bear with us, guys. Switching books is tough. Mm -hmm. You say KUB in lateral or at the level of the crest? KUB in lateral or at the level of the crest. All the other ones we're talking about are two inches above the crest. Lateral or just this one? This is a regular lateral. Lateral decubitus is two inches above. But regular lateral, like they're just on their side and you're doing straight down x-ray straight down like a regular lateral x-ray at the level of the crest. And there you go, so that's central ray at the level of the crest. Entering that MCP, by the way, make sure you are entering the MCP, very important. Check that crosshair, make sure you're not too anterior or posterior on the patient's body. And this is what you wanna see. And then our evaluation criteria. So no rotation, and when we achieve that once again by making sure those knees are stacked right on top of each other. We do want our superimposed ilia, that's our iliac crest area. If you look at the image and you see two separate ridges, it tells you that the hips are rotating. We want those hips nice and superimposed on top of each other. Both those all of both those iliac crests. We want the superimposed lumbar vertebrae pedicles. Y'all don't know what a pedicle is yet, but it's this thing right here. And we want these open intervertebral foramina. That's these nice little holes we see right here. That's your intervertebral foramina. And then as much of the remaining abdomen as possible, and the diaphragm is included. We do want as much of the abdomen as possible, so make sure that, that um, IR is opened up nicely. Because once again, why are we primarily doing this? We're looking for foreign bodies. If you collimate too much, you might risk cutting off that foreign body, and you're defeating the purpose of the exam entirely. And we got something right here on this image. What that is. That's close. Those like uh, gray things? Yeah. Yeah. Now for this one, you can do right or left. It does not matter. Right or left. Different from the cube because we primarily only do the left laterals. But for regular laterals, you have the option of left or right. You can say I did a right lateral on this one. Are those leads? I don't think they're leads. I'm pretty sure what that is. A uh, patient does have an interesting surgical device in there. Do you might see it? Is it the uh, hook shape thing? Like in the middle? Oh, no, it's that thing. See this right here? Mm -hmm. This right here? You might know what that is. Usually, a lot of your cardiac patients have these. Uh, patients oh, with blood flow yeah. issues. It's a narrowing of the veins and arteries. Is it a stent? Stents. Those are stents. Yeah. Correct. That's last one now. Last one, guys. Last one, our dorsal decubitus. It's your last position of the chapter. Last position of the semester, guys. Dorsal decubitus abdomen. Once again, we do this when the patient cannot stand or lie on their side. And this is basically done whenever they are having trouble seeing those air fluid levels, they want an alternative position to watch that air rise or that fluid fall. You are gonna have the patient supine, thus the name dorsal decubitus. They're laying on their back, arms up above their head, still supporting those knees for comfort to make sure they're not shifting that weight. And we're gonna be using that horizontal, <coughs> excuse me, horizontal beam hitting our IR, just like a regular left lateral decube. And just like the other cube guys, two inches above the crest, the center, two inches above the crest. So once again, the only two that we're doing at the crest are the KUB 
And what else? Lateral. Lateral. The regular lateral. Everything else is two inches above the crest. Very rare exam. You don't see this one too often. So I'm just reiterating the same point, guys. Central ray, two inches above the crest, horizontal and perpendicular central ray to the center of our IR. So the sideways lateral. Just look at the chest. Y'all didn't do this one in lab, right? Yeah. Y'all did do this one in lab? Yeah. Okay, good. Just making sure. Because this was an add on from the past book. All right, what we want to see, guys, we want, we want to see what we call the pre vertebral space. That's the area surrounding the spine. And those air fluid levels, that's the main reason that we always do the cubes. We're looking for air fluid levels because the air is rising, the fluid is falling. Typically, your air will be up here towards the anterior surface. If there's any fluid, you'll see it falling more towards the spinal area. We want those superimposed ilia once again at your hips to make sure there's no rotation going on. Your superimposed lumbar vertebrae pedicles with those open circles or those foramina. We want that diaphragm without motion. We achieve that once again by taking the exposure on expiration only. Every abdominal x-ray is expiration only. And your proper identification indicating which side is closest to the IR. In other words, we want to label that side that is up once again. So if the left side is touching the IR for dorsal, we're going to use a left marker with the arrow up. If the right side is touching, it's going to be a right marker with the arrow pointing up. For your dorsal to cube, once again, you have the choice of left or right. The only one where it is required is that left lateral cubus x-ray. That has to be left. But these other ones, you have the option of right or left. And of course, as much as that abdomen as possible, guys, you're gonna do that by filling your patient up once again. You don't wanna cut any of their back off in case there's some fluid falling all the way down there. Fill that patient up using some pillows, some sheets, sponges if you have them. Get that entire abdomen on that x-ray. If I put one like this, I would want you guys to identify where the free air is. So we were told not to use pillows and just use sheets because that question came up because the pillow might show some. Actually, shadow. sheets can be just as bad because sheets get bunched up and they're going to call streaks on your image. Optimally, you want to use what's called a radiolucent sponge, but a lot of your facilities don't have those. They're actually very expensive. So if you have nothing else to work with, pillows and sheets are okay, but optimally, you want to use a sponge. Mm -hmm. Or like that thing in the lab, you know that blue, did you guys you know that blue thing you put on the table in lab? Those are usually okay. Oh, those can be okay as well. They don't show up as bad as sheets. Mm -hmm. I used to use them all the time. All right, review question. Which of the following might be used to demonstrate a pneumoperitoneum? It's a pathology we just talked about. Which one, or which of the following, rather, might be used? I'll give up. Hey, I'll give up. It's your keyword that says, use your grammar, hey. that tells you the answer. Your grammar tells you the answer there. What is pneumoperitoneum, first of all? Which of those that you see there shows us free air? A. 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 I heard one person say the right answer. It's all of them, guys. It's all of them. That's a bit of a trick question there. It sure is. Upright, shows air fluid. 
Mm -hmm. Laugh Barbecue is also shows air fluid. And the last one we just talked about, Dorsal, mm -hmm. also all three of those show air fluid. Now, be careful. A little trick on questions, guys. Usually, if you see a question, you know, with all of the above, it's saying which of the following. It doesn't indicate which one of the following or which two. It doesn't give you a number. Typically, it's going to say all of the above. <coughs> It's a test taking technique, though. You're gonna put all of the we gotta work on those test taking techniques. All the above Sometimes, if, if you if you see like like seriously, guys, like if you're taking your registry, great example. If you're taking your registry, because our brains are scope blank. And you're like, oh my god, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know what that word is. I've gone so blank, I don't even know what an abdomen is. <laughs> You can look at your grammar. The power of the English language can help you find an answer sometimes. When in doubt, grammar. I know we hated grammar in school, but it can be your best friend. All right. To include the diaphragm on upright positions, AP projections of the abdomen. The central ray is centered to what? A. 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 Don't forget that principle right there. You were correct. Two inches above the iliac crest. And that is the main reason that we do two inches above the crest when we want to make sure that diaphragm is on the image. We're going to be at the crest, we want to see that what? Crest, pubic synthesis, two inches above the diaphragm, primarily. We are getting to our last section here. Our image critique practice. Our image critique practice. Huh? I'm torturing you. It's some good classic music. Don't be wrong with that music. <laughs> I mean, that was before my time, too, but I love it. You know? That came out before I was even born, but hey, good stuff. All right, review question here, guys. What is the projection and the position of the below image? D. We just looked at this one. D. 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 Someone tell me. D. D. Okay, thank you. D. <laughs> Left lateral decubitus, also an AP projection. Don't forget your projections versus positions, guys. It's back to chapter two, okay? It still applies. How do you confirm that is a left lateral decubitus, by the way? Right, right, side side right. right side of Right side's up, left side's down, and it's also AP projection with that horizontal beam. You'll see that? Right here. What is the projection and position of the below image? What is that? A. I already want to make two answers right off the bat there. C. Don't overthink it. C. No, it's not A. Remember that saying projection and position. Based on this right here, you can eliminate two of those answers right off the bat. Oh, I see. What projection is that, guys? Oh, it's the That's a dorsal. What projection? Lateral. Oh. It's a lateral, right? It's a lateral projection. So C and D, I can knock off. Already, that doesn't apply. So, knowing that, what's the position? It's dorsal. It's dorsal decubitus. Dorsal decubitus. How can you confirm it's dorsal decubitus? <laughs> Thank you. Whatever that word is. How can you confirm that's a dorsal decubitus and not a regular left lateral? What tells us that? The spine. The spine. Not exactly. There's one key factor that tells us that that has to be a decubitus. The, uh, oh, the, the, the markers are mm -hmm. right there. Am I going to put a side up marker on a regular lateral? I am not. If you see one of these little arrows, that's always an indication it's some kind of DQ. Mm -hmm. Little cheat sheet there. Little cheat code. Code little cheat codes. Good thing to remember. The gamer in me coming out. Little cheat codes. <laughs> I don't like to use the word cheat in school, though. Right? Like pro tips. How that? <laughs> pro tip. Arrow. Backpacks. You said it's a the cubus? How is it a lateral? No, I'm talking about the yeah. arrow. He said just the yeah, okay. like lateral chest. Oh, okay. right. yeah, yeah. Side. 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 AP, front to back, lateral side to side. Side lateral, front AP. So that would be a what? Projection. What projection is that, guys? AP. That's an AP projection. What's the position? Oh. Wait, that's okay. Right. 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 No, no. Supine. It's your evaluation. Supine. AP supine. Yeah. 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 
Could you see the pubic symphysis? You see pubic symphysis. That's indicative of what kind of x-ray, um, guys? Supine. Supine. The supine does the evaluation criteria. It's an AP supine, or it might say an AP KB image. And if we saw the diaphragm, it would be upright? Correct. Correct. Yes? If there's no marker, is it AP or PA? If there's a what? I'm there's sorry. no marker? There's no marker. So we don't do PAs as slow. Keep that in mind. I know you didn't laugh, but for curriculum, we're not going to do a PA this low. PA is going to have diaphragm on it, first of all. But if you see an image just like that, then it's always going to be an AP KDB. Now, one way you can tell, I don't know if I have an image on here, but I can find one for you guys. One way you can tell PA versus AP abdomen x rays is if these ala are a lot thinner, they look very sharp, almost like ears, because it distorts them on a PA view. I'm trying to find you all an image show what I'm talking about. It's another way you can double check yourself. But for now, let me show you the evaluation criteria. We have pubic synthesis, it has to be an AP supine KUV. But uh, was it last, before the last test, you said if there's no marker, it's a... Uh... Oh, you mean like what you what you assume? Uh -huh. Like for a chest, if there's no marker, you always assume the PA. Only for chest? Um, for abdomen, if there's no marker, well, look at your criteria on the abdomen. If you're down to pubic synthesis, it's always going to be KUV or AP supine. You know, we're going to rely on the marker for that one. So, and you also look at the air on the, on the abdomen. If you see some air in the abdomen, it doesn't have that little horizontal line going across. They're on their back. If you do see an abdomen and there's a line going across, that tells you they are upright. They're standing up. And you'll learn to eyeball that as we move on as well. It's going to come to you. Just like I'm talking about right here. The straight lines. So what position is that? There's upright. I mean, they're upright. But which one of the choices is correct? Why isn't that a decubitus? Because there's no marker, no arrow. No marker with an arrow, and it's also not sideways, right? Mm -hmm. So your sideways films also indicate they're going to be the cube because that's how we hand them and present them to the radiologist. So what was that last one again? I'm sorry. This is it. an AP upright. Okay. About this one right here, projection in position. B. It is a lateral for sure, lateral projection. What's the position? Right lateral. Why? First off, look at how it's hung. It's hung like this, which tells us they're on a regular lateral. And also look at your marker. Do you see any arrows? No arrows, so that's going to be a regular right lateral pattern. What's the main reason we do these? Foreign objects, foreign bodies. Not the only reason, but it's the primary reason we do them. All right, that is the end of chapter four. That's your last chapter of the semester. How's that feel? <laughs>